Okay, now the question is, if we've said that it's only a matter of different conditions, cause and effects, then what exactly governs all of these cause and effects and conditions? And this can be answered by looking at the following verse. It is called the verse of cause and effect. It says, Endurance generates integrity, while stinginess and greed generate poverty. Respect generates dignity, while arrogance generates indignity. Slander causes one to become dumb, while disbelief causes one to become blind or deaf. Compassion generates longevity, while the act of killing causes one to be short-lived. Violation of precepts causes one to suffer from an incomplete physique, while observing precepts allows one to possess a healthy body. From this verse, we can see that wealth, poverty, integrity, beauty, or ugliness all have their own cause and effect. In other words, it's pretty much we who decide what kind of effect we will create with our actions or our karma. Furthermore, the moral of this verse is that we determine who we are. In other words, we should treasure our present blessings and not take things for granted. Secondly, we should always sow the seeds of good effects from this verse which tells us what generates what, then we should pretty much be aware that our actions or our behavior pretty much determine how we are going to turn out in the future. Another point to mention is that none of the above will come by luck, or none of them will come under the influence of a third party but our own behavior. So once again, we determine who we are. And since our behavior can determine our fortune or misfortune, one who suffers from misfortune in the past can also work hard to transform it into happiness. Once there was a young novice monk who lived inside a temple with his master. And as his master was a very well cultivated Buddhist monk, he had a, the ability to see into a person's past and future. And one day, he saw that the time for his novice monk to pass away is very quick. It's coming very near because of, he, of his bad previous karma. Therefore, he said to this novice monk, Why don't you go home for a few days and spend time with your, your parents? And since he knew that the monk was going to die in four days, he said to the Buddhist monk, Go home for four days and come back after you've spent time with your parents. Therefore, the novice monk packed up his luggage and left the temple and headed for his home. On his way home, he saw he came across an overflooded river where a bunch of ants were trapped on a rock in the middle of the river. And as the ants were getting very close to being washed away by the wild torrent, the little monk picked up a wooden stick, a tree branch, and connected the rock and his hand with the branch so that the ants could climb onto the branch and then he could carry them ashore and allow them to walk away safely. After he did that, after he saved all the ants, he continued his way home. He got home and he spent time with his parents for four days and then he came back to the temple on the fifth day, which surprised the old monk. And then the old monk used his ability to again to look into what had happened in the past days and then realized that it was because of the little monk's action in saving these little ants that allowed him to lengthen his stay in the world. In other words, his lifespan was lengthened because of this good action. And this is a, this is a very good example of how your action or your behavior can determine the outcomes in your life. 
In other words, the concept of cause and effect recognizes those who are optimistic, those who are active, and those who are hardworking, and it helps them to continue to forge ahead. One thing we must bear in mind is that in this world, there is no effect without a cause, and there is no cause that does not yield an effect. Furthermore, there is no effect that is inappropriate for its cause, and that there is no cause that will not yield its due effect. These are the points which we need to bear in mind as we talk about the concept of cause and effect. And ultimately, cause and effect are something that is determined by us, no one else. Now the second point which we need to look at is the fact that every condition has its own cause and effect. Cause and effect is not just a concept or a theory. In fact, cause and effect has a deep relation with our daily lives, personal relationships, religious belief, moral ethics, health, and economic conditions, and so on. The examples which you have listed before. Are pretty good demonstrations of this point. For example, when we are hungry, we eat, which is the cause to satisfy our hunger, and our、uh, hunger being satisfied in the end becomes the effect. When we work hard, this working hard is the cause, and the effect of us working hard will be that we earn money and we make a good living. Or、uh, when we are cold, we put on more clothes, which is the cause for us. To put on clothes, and this cause creates effect of us being kept warm, and so on. So it's as simple as that. A cause gives rise to its dual effect. But we have to be aware of a misconception of cause and effect, which is incorrect expectations in religious belief. For example, some people expect that they will be blessed with. Success or wealth just by becoming a vegetarian, so they eat vegetarian, and thinking that it will be the cause of their success or comfort. But this is not correct. We can't say that just by eating vegetarian food, we'd be given the right conditions to achieve whatever we want to do. But once again, religious beliefs create their own effects, while moral ethics or wealth create that of their own. Therefore, if we want a healthy body, then we have to make sure that the right cause has been created or given. Therefore, if you want a healthy body, you need to create or plan the right causes by doing exercise and looking after ourselves. So, eat at the right time, sleep at the right time, and do enough exercise for a day to keep our body healthy. That's the right cause for a healthy body, which is the effect. And as for wealth, if we want the effect of wealth, then we need to plan the right cause by working hard, or by creating good personal relationships who can help us achieve our goals on our process or on our path to success. So these will be the proper or the right causes to the effect of wealth. And observing vegetarianism and prostrating to Buddha statues are, in fact, forms of religious faith. If we create a religious cause and expect wealth and health in return, then a false view on cause and effect will be present. Therefore, we need to bear this in mind. The third point which we need to look at now is that one reaps what he sows. Every one of us is equal in front of cause and effect and karma, because karma moves like a shadow that follows the body everywhere, and no one can escape it, because it is a part of you. It is a part of your doings. And cause and effect can manifest in three different time spans. First of all, in one's present lifetime. Secondly, in one's immediate next lifetime, and also in one's Future lifetimes, some cause produce effect in the present lifetime, while some cause effect in the next lifetime, while some may produce effect only after many lifetimes. 
Therefore, we cannot just look at one lifetime to understand cause and effect. For example, we can't stop a bad person from withdrawing money from his bank account just because he has done something evil. Because what he had done now may only bear results in the future. So we cannot say that he's going to suffer from nothing but bad karma from now on because he still has his good previous karmas that are waiting to manifest. Therefore, what he's, ex what he's experiencing now may be the effects of his past doings. But of course, his present doings will also give rise to future effects and so on. Therefore, we can't say that just because a person is a gentleman, when he's indebted, and this gentleman or this well-educated person will no longer have to repay his debt. It doesn't work that way. And now, when we talk about karma, we realize that karma lives through thousands of lifetimes, and it will manifest when the times and conditions are right. So basically, those who practice virtue will reap a fortune in return, while evildoers are bound to meet misfortune. It's only a matter of time. So once virtue or evil causes are created, the effects will take place when the suitable time and conditions arrive. And let me demonstrate this by telling you a story. Once there was a monk who pledged to build a temple at a certain location. And in ancient China, the method used to raise funds was different from that used today. Instead of asking for donations, the monk would sit or stand at the side of the future temple and recite sutras to preach the Dharma, hoping to move the community to action. For three months, this elderly monk sat at the, the local position and recited the sutras, but no one paid him any extra attention except for a young boy who sold hotcakes on the street for a nearby store owner. The young boy could not bear to see the elder monk not being able to realize his vow, and compassion arose in the boy. He thought to himself, this poor monk, maybe if I gave him the money from the hotcakes, I can help him realize his vow. The boy offered the money he got from selling hotcakes to the monk. And when news of this boy's gallant action spread, the villagers reflected on their own nonchalance and felt embarrassed about their, their stinginess. By word of mouth, people came from all over to help, offer help to the monk. And in no time, the monk collected enough money to start construction. The monk was very moved by the boy's compassion and said to him, My little friend, your compassion today has had an enormous impact. You are a great Dharma friend to our temple. If there is anything I can do, please do not hesitate to ask. The young boy just smiled and went his way. When the boy returned to the store, he did not have the money to give to the store owner. The owner was livid and fired the boy on the spot. With such short notice, the little boy was not able to find another job and was forced to beg for a living. Things went from bad to worse. Not only was he poor, he came down with an infectious disease and consequently lost his eyesight. With nowhere to turn, he suddenly recalled what the monk had said to him and decided to go to the temple for help. Now this monk had, uh, had attained the ability to see into the future and knew beforehand that the little boy would come to him for help. So during the night, he gathered his followers and told them, Tomorrow our great patron will come here. I want you all to be ready to receive him and show him the utmost respect. The next day, everybody got up early in the morning to clean and dust. They waited and waited, but no one of importance came to the, te the temple. Later, the elderly monk asked the monk in charge of hospitality, did, your, did our great patron show up? I did not see any great patron come to the temple today, except for a little blind beggar boy. He insisted on coming in, but I was afraid that he would be in the way when the great patron shows up, so I gave him a few pieces of bread and asked him to leave. The elder monk said, You've made a great mistake. The little boy was our great patron. 
Hurry and see if you can catch up with him and ask him to come back. The young monk did as he was told and quickly caught up with the little beggar. He invited the boy back to the temple and prepared a guest room so that the boy might stay in the temple for a while. Unfortunately, one night, when the little boy went out to um, the toilet to relieve himself, he fell into the toilet pit and drowned. When people in the village heard what had happened to the boy, they discussed among themselves. Look, how can we say that the law of cause and effect is functioning here? Everything was going along just fine when he sold cock hot cakes for the store owner. His luck took a turn for the worse ever since he gave his money to the monk to build the temple. First he became a beggar, then he became blind. And just when he thought things were looking up, he drowned in the temple toilet. How can we believe in the law of cause and effect?